Okay, so welcome for the session today. So the session today is actually finding right life partners. And as I wrote in my message, uh, life partner doesn't necessarily mean romantic. It also means any kind of partnership that you would like to have for long term can be uh, with a friend, can be with a business, can be your business or, or, or place you work with, or even a home. So it can be anything. Okay? So we'll, it can be mate, inmate, or I mean, an object which is human or could be non-human. And we will also understand why you may not have manifested it, the right life partner yet, so that it creates a meaning for you. Why? And and that then then what we'll do is we'll do an exercise. As I said, we were we are going to get into something so that we can create some kind of consciousness, and also understand the resistances because there are resistances that stop you from manifesting that. So we'll get into that. And then we'll at the end use tuning forks to further dissolve whatever resistance come up. So that's our agenda for the day. And then we will open up at the end for Q&A or any sharing or questions. Okay, so let's get into the story of why you're missing to manifest life right partner now. So think about, and I want you to make it more than theoretical, think about w what one life partner that you are looking for so can be as i said romantic but could be a friend or company you work work with create your own business uh, and can be a home house so just think about one of them into your life and and please you can of course uh, as i mentioned bring in your pa paper and pencil because it's, it's going to be a bit more experiential and writing you're doing some writing in this session today uh, so think about one. Now, when you think about that partner that you're looking for, what will be interesting is to observe what you observe from your past experiences. And the reason we look at that is because the way our neurology works is we actually project our future from the past, always. This is how it works. Okay, and so because past has what has experiences has emotions good or bad uh, has beliefs that have been formed as a result of those experiences and emotion and some of them we call them traumas but some of them are just purely beliefs now they play into your uh, what we call filters into how you look at the future and when we look at the past and you you say well i tried to do that and uh, something i i got something i didn't like or i did not want i have I, you could have a pattern that repeats itself there we every experience which means for if for example it could be friend but could be a life partner could be anything you see similar patterns coming in more or less or it could be uh, a business you want to create and things didn't happen as it did and you will you can observe there were patterns that repeated itself and you also sometimes say well i've seen this before i observed it in my parents i observed it in my teachers i also observed it maybe in legacy, my grandparents, or my religion, or a, uh, close proximity around me where I've been very close. So I've seen this before. So one or all of them happens a lot, which means I manifest something I don't want, so I don't like it. I see repetition of what happened before ha happening multiple times and almost similar signs or patterns. And uh, if I think about it, I've seen it before. And it comes back to what I've been saying before, was that the reason you repeat or it manifests repeatedly into same way is because you have 
in your consciousness, those beliefs, uh, certain patterns that are sitting there that actually are working for you, not in your favor. And then the question you keep asking yourself is, why, why do I continue to manifest this way? This is a classical question which comes from a place of frustration and anger. Most of it directed toward myself, because then you say there must be something wrong in me. Uh, it is it, with me or in me. And you kind of come to a conclusion almost that it's all my fault. And the thing is that if unresolved, there's a risk that the pattern that has happened in the past will continue to show up in the future relationships or what we call partnerships. And, and the reason I'm saying that to you now is not from a place of making you feel guilty because if you become guilty, then you're back into the same program. When you become aware of why it could happen, then you can do something to change the way in your approach. And today, what we are actually going to do is exactly that. And we will do this simple exercise to help you actually not only understand what you want, but also to understand the inner resistances that hold you back. But before we go there, I really want you to internalize that our past creates patterns or what we call beliefs from the experiences that we continue to put forward as if this is what is going to happen. Because the things you will say, well, oh, I'm going into this, I know this is where it is going to end up. And you kind of are repeating it subconsciously, but you are playing from that place. So what we want to do is to break that pattern. And the reason to break that pattern is that so that you can do something to make it deviate from the same way as it continues to happen in the past, okay? So, what are we going to do, okay? We are going to do these four steps, okay? Uh, actually, there are five, and I will come to the fifth one afterwards. Uh, the first step we are going to do is to think about one partnership that you want to work on. And then what we are going to do is to go deep inside and ask the question, what is that really I want? Not from the place of looking in the past, but from a place of looking into future. So we will kind of, in a, in a deep way, disconnect a little bit for a moment, a few minutes from the past. And then I will make you write something which is projecting into future. And then what we are going to do is actually we are going to go into future. Now, what happens is when you think about something in the present moment, the past comes into place and it creates a vision of your what you will think about your current story. When you future pace, actually your brain has no visualization or patterns that are there. So what happens is you disconnect from the, from the inputs from the past, which are still in your neurology, and actually you start to connect to your intuition, which is from your heart. And what intuition does is it starts to create you patterns which are usually different from what you have seen in the past. And once you look at those patterns and, and future pace, that's why it's called future pacing, you start to think and believe that, wow, this is possible for me because it's not just in my creation. I could see it, sense it, feel it, touch it, literally. And that's what we are going to do. And then I will do the fifth step, which I didn't write here, but is what we're going to do is actually I'm going to look at all your resistances. So we will come back to the present moment, knowing there's a future there, and then look at resistances inside. Name them, make you understand who, 
who are those resistance inside of you in a place of love and and the reason we'll name them is because I would like you to go back and I will send you afterwards the exercise that you can do in the following days so that you can actually connect to all of them and have a conversation with them so that they can start to melt away because that's what they do okay once they understand that you understood why I'm sticking to this point or why I'm here then it starts to melt down and starts to turn from being against you or against what you want to do and come in favor and be your best friend and best coach or guide so that's what we are going to do okay now before going that I want you to take your paper and pen and I want you to write these things so what you're going to do is write on a piece of paper three questions okay so just don't write the answers just write three questions so think about that one relationship or partnership you want life partnership anything okay so write it down now write three questions on the left and leave some space below so you are going to write afterwards so write the question what are the five qualities i want to see in this person or if you are looking for a home or a business in that business five qualities so just write what are the five qualities don't write the qualities yet just write what are the five qualities okay then what you're going to leave some space and then write what are the three things we do when we are together so it can be with your business it can be with your house but it can be also with your person that's a love that you're looking for whatever it is okay what are the three things we do when we are together that makes me feel alive and feel fulfilled so just write the question and leave some space so that you can write three things afterwards and then the last question is what are the five qualities i must have in me to be in this relationship for the rest of my life What are five qualities that I must have to be in this relationship for the rest of my life? Whether it's a business, a house, or a person, what you're going to do, answer. So just write those three questions. Okay. And leave the paper there, leave the pen there, because you are going to go together on a journey. So if you have written the three questions i want you to just be comfortable you can settle in feel your body to be in a comfortable position and you can keep your eyes open or it will be good to go close your eyes if you can And imagine your breath is going in and out of your heart. Breathing a little slower and deeper than usual. Just follow your breath. And imagine you're floating 500 feet into the air. Imagine a white light is coming down from heavens, entering into your head. Filling up your head, your shoulders, your arms, your chest, your belly. And the light is going down into your legs, through your feet, 
is going into deep into Mother Earth and picking up all the powerful energy that the Mother Hot Earth holds and bringing it back into your body through your feet and fills up your legs, every cell of your legs goes up into your belly and fills up all the belly area goes up into your chest and fills up all the chest area goes up into your shoulders, into your arms and fills it up and through your neck goes into your head and fills up all your head now you're filled with this beautiful, powerful white light. Imagine you are standing in front of stairs going down. And with every stair step you take down, you become more relaxed. You take the first step and you relax your head, your jaws. You take the second step down, you relax your neck, your shoulders, and feel it getting relaxed. And you take the third step going down, you feel your arms and fingers relaxing. As you take the fourth step down, you feel your heart, your chest area relaxing. And with the fifth step, you relax your stomach, your belly area. And take a seventh step down, you relax your thighs. Eighth step, you relax your knees. The ninth step, you relax your feet. As you take the tenth step down, you feel that your whole body is fully relaxed. You may feel your eyes are very heavy, and even if you try to open them, you will not be able to do. You are deeply relaxed now. And imagine you are in a garden, as you look around, you find things around you that are a bit dull, gloomy. The flowers are dull, the ground is grey, it's overcast. Everything around you looks a bit sad. And as you look up, you see a stream with a bridge. And you walk over the bridge, across the stream, and you find yourself in a beautiful garden with colorful flowers. The sun is shining here, Everything looks happy. There are butterflies all around you and the sun is shining on your face and bringing warmth into your soul. As you look back, you see the other side of the bridge, old side, And the bridge is collapsing. And slowly the other side fades away. And you are in this new place. Where your future life is already present. You know this future life exists already. And it is coming to you. Feel that the universe is open to listen and is there to support you. Feel
feel the love of universe into you. Asking empowering questions help to be, helps you to become clear about your future. Before you write your needs of a future partner, ask these empowering questions. What gift am I to give to the world? What is seeking to emerge in my life? What are the steps to download the articulation of my vision of life? What idea is the universe seeking to express through me? must I become to manifest the vision of my life? Becoming is growing. Where must I grow? Listen to the inner voice. Listen to the answers that emerge. See it with the inner eye and feel with your heart. And allow it to articulate itself to you. It is not in the future. It is speaking to you right now. Feel it. In a few moments, you will open your eyes and you will write about the new life partner you're wishing to bring in your life. Whenever you're ready, open your eyes. Take the paper with the three questions you've written and write the answers to the three questions. Write as if your your future is already there. So write them in a present tense. Write with no constraints or limitations. Universe is all giving. All you need to do is ask. Take five minutes. Write the answers to those three questions.
So as you finish writing, I just want you to read it one time, what you have written. Now if you can, take a moment to read it. And now I want you to just close your eyes and take a couple of deep breaths into your heart. Just breathing in deeply and breathing out. Just follow your breath. Coming into a place of calmness, inner peace, connecting to your heart. I want you to imagine that everything you wrote, everything you wrote there has happened. You found the person or the thing that you are looking for with all the characteristics. You are doing things together and you have the qualities you wrote in yourself. And imagine six months have passed and it's now January of 2023. Now look around you, what's happening there? What are people saying about you? What are you saying to others about your life partner? And notice how you feel. Now imagine one year has passed and it's July 2023, since you took the decision. Look around your life, see what's happening around you. What's happening to the partner? What's going on between the two of you? What are you saying about this to the others? To your friends, to your family, to other people? And what are the other people telling you about you and your partner? See it, hear it. And notice how it feels. Imagine two years have passed and it's July 2024 since you took the decision. See what is going on around you. How's your life? What are you telling others about your life? And what do you hear from people? And how do you feel? You 
And imagine 10 years have passed. It's July 2032. How is your life? What do you see? What are you telling people about your life? What are people telling you about your life? What do you hear? Do you hear yourself telling others about your partner and you? What are things you're doing? And how do you feel? Have a sense of deep gratitude in your heart, knowing that the new partner is coming to you. You don't know how, but have a knowing as you could see it. Now slowly start to come back to the present moment, being here and now, and keep your eyes closed, because we are going to go in and check with your inner system. Now stay in this place of curiosity and compassion. And ask a question to all your system inside of you. Ask it, is there anyone inside of me that has an objection to this relationship I'm creating? Is there anyone inside of me that has an objection to this relationship I'm creating? And notice if there's a voice that starts to come up. Notice where you feel it in or around your body. And as you hear that voice and you notice it in or around your body, just notice how do you feel towards that voice, which is objecting. You may feel angry, you may feel frustrated, or even some fear of, afraid of it. But we are here to create bridges clear up everything that has an objection. So see if you can be a bit curious and even compassionate towards the voice. Because it's trying to bring something to your attention for your own good. 
So see if you can be curious and a bit compassionate towards it. And from this place of compassion and curiosity, see if you can first name this objection. Just give it and ask it, give me your name and just give it a name, any name. Whatever name you hear, just remember it. Now connect to this place in or around your body where you felt it and ask it a few questions from this place of curiosity. Ask it, what do you want me to be aware of? And let it answer. Now ask it, what is your intention for me? And let it answer to you. Again, you're connecting to this place in your body where you felt the objection. So ask it, what's your intention for me? And let it answer. and see how it makes sense to you, what it is actually trying to do for you. And then ask it, what are you afraid would happen to me? And let it answer. You can further ask, and if that happens, then what happens next? What are you really afraid would happen to me? Always staying in a place of curiosity and compassion. What it told you was what it was protecting you from. So thank it for letting you know. And notice how do you feel towards this voice now? And if you feel different, then let it know how you feel towards it. Thank it for letting you know. And again, ask another question. Is there anyone else who has an objection to this relationship I want to be in? And if there is a voice you hear again, which may be different from the first one, Notice where do you feel it in your body. Now, how do you feel towards this voice which is objecting?
Let's see if you can be a bit curious or a bit compassionate towards it. Because it's trying to bring to your awareness something. Ask it a name or name it and take note of it. Now again, from this place of curiosity and compassion, ask it, what is your intention for me? And listen to the message that comes in. And see if you can just be thankful to it for making you aware. And then ask again, what are you afraid would happen to me if you didn't do this? And let it respond. ask and then what happens what are you really afraid would happen and let it respond she told you what it is protecting you from Staying in the place of gratitude and love for it. See if you can be grateful and tell them. Thank you for letting me know. And let them know that you are going to be in touch with them. Or next days. Maybe there are others that would come up and you'll keep on repeating till every one who has objection in your system has been heard. Let them all know. Now follow your breath back and take a moment, you can open your eyes and take a moment to write down whatever comes up, came up for you and then I will prepare for detuning forks. We are going to start with the tuning fork. So uh, if you have not been here before, there's a breath that I just need to explain to you and then you can start to relax. So the breath is you take the breath, fill up your belly, and then when you breathe out, you breathe from your mouth. And you will breathe when I will ask you to breathe. So just follow the lead, okay? 
And there's the other thing which I may ask you is to take a breath in and then say, ha, ah, so it's release, okay? Now, all of this we are doing to help you release whatever resistance there would be. And so I'm just going to start with opening the two centers, the one below the feet and top of the head. And then we will go into the middle, into whatever center there it comes up. And every time I'm going to say there's a certain age, if there is something that you feel or sense at that age, you just bring it to your awareness. You don't have to do anything, just bring it to your awareness. See what it felt to you at that time, if there's a memory that comes up, and stay with that while we clear it. Okay, so here we go. So relax, you can lie down, you can sit where you are, just relax. And think about a wish, something you want for yourself. And we start immediately. Okay, so I'm going to start below your feet, connected all of you into this place, and we're going to begin below your feet. So opening the center below the feet. Take a breath. So I'm one feet below the foot. Pointing the tuning fork towards your legs, through the backbone, opening the channel to the top of the head. So it's like going from the bottom, opening to the top of the head. Take a breath. I'm going to ground you, connect to your mother earth. So I'm going to go to the top of the head and open the center top. pointing tuning for top of the head so that the uh, channel opens from top top into mother earth through your backbone take a breath Take a breath. Today, all of you are in a good place. Okay, so now I'm going to run the pendulum through different centers just to see which area I'm going to go. It came to me the second center, but I will just check. Okay. Right, okay, second center is okay. Solar plexus. Heart. Okay. And solar plexus. So it's on the left side again, it's mother's side again. So it's all about powerlessness, relationship with mother or mother-like figure. Yes, like last time. Okay, so I'm going to start from your birth and go in. I will say an age. And whenever I say age, whatever comes up, just bring it to awareness and we'll breathe through it and heal it, release it. 
Oh God. Okay, so I'm before birth now. So it's a pregnancy. A lot of fear. So in the pit of the stomach, there's a lot of fear. If you know something, if you heard something, just go there, stay there. The fear is in your mother. Before you were born. Take a breath. So I'm going to switch to, to heal. So just take a breath. Take, take your mother's name in your mind. Send her love. I'm at birth. Yeah, birth is always a story. Take a breath. Again, send love to the little you and your mother. Anything that you remember, birth time. Take a breath. So I'm going to just get twenty four. Ten year old, <sighs> completely powerless in a place where you had no power. <sighs> a ten, eleven year old, ten year, eleven year old. See if something comes up. Stay with that. year old same thing whatever comes up here is much more fear oriented going into the pit of the stone Afraid of something that has happened. And you feel powerless.
affected your self-esteem. Take a breath and It's gone into your mother area, so if you have anything still as a memory of what your mother went through, difficulty, just hold her into that space, sending her love. Take a breath. <sighs> Just release. So whatever came up, we're going to release it out. Take a breath. going to now so whatever has happened has changed continue to work for the next 48 hours <sighs> take a breath And surround you in a cocoon of 528 hertz. Stay in the rest first place and we'll open in a couple of minutes. <laughs>